Wahlberg Garcia Show. Welcome to the one and only Robert Garcia Show. What's up? How's it going? Uh, oh, it's going. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to figure out how this new year is going to go, and it's going pretty smooth so far. Right. What do you think, well, Graham? Well, yeah, it is, actually. I just put a, a little YouTube video out for the for the kids. I put a... Um, we're starting this podcast. Um and for the for the landscaping we do, I just started kicking that off. We started getting a lot of, like you know, emails out and, and stuff like that. So I would say, we're not rich yet, but we started the new year off pretty strong. So I I think it's in the right direction as long as we keep it going. You know. Hey Ram, yeah. I can dig that. All right. <laughs> you know what? What we really need to do though is, is is since this is the one and only Robert Garcia show. We need to find out more about you, right? So I wrote down some questions. Ask I thought, away. Yeah, I thought, let me read these questions. I thought we could help everybody get to know who you are so they can understand where our show's coming from, you know? Right uh, on. I can dig that. Okay. So <clears throat> my first question is... Mm-hmm. My Don't first, hesitate my, to ask anything. My, my first question is... In a few words, how would you describe who Robert Garcia is? Just so everyone can understand, you know, you know, this is a roundabout, you know? Well, hmm. let me start by introducing myself a little bit. I'm, my name is Robert Garcia. My middle name is Roy. Of course, nobody really wants to know that, but if I ever become rich, I'm going to call myself for Robert Roy RR. Okay. I'm playing the, the lotto, and you never know if you don't play. What what made you you through your life? You know, I mean, you don't have to go into big detail, but just growing up and experiences. What made you you right now? Who who are you? Well, in answer to that question that that Rab just asked me, what made me who I am is the way is the way I was raised by my father and by my uncle. They taught me how to survive anywhere, and I did just that in in uh, San right. Quentin. Wasco, Corcoran, Pelican Bay. The only thing I was disappointed when I went to Pelican Bay, I thought I was going to see flocks of pelicans. And there was none, except for the statue of one, a concrete one in front of my building. So I was a little bit disappointed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, see, I've never been to Pelican Bay yet, but um kind of sounds like there would be pelicans. Well, I mean, it's way out mm-hmm. there, about nine miles from the Oregon border. It takes about eight hours to get there. Right. But you survived it, right? Oh yeah, like like it was like riding a bike. <laughs> they, I say that because right. they say once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget. And 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 so you were raised like that already, just kind of to handle your business, take care of yourself, survive. Yeah, in, in a nutshell, that that's yeah. how I was raised, and that's who you are today, still, right? Exactly, that's who okay. I'll always be. I mean, I know that. That's 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 true. I Nobody know that. can take that from me. No. And when they got you locked up, they got you locked up. They don't got your mind locked up or your will or your, your heart or your heart. Right. So I was right at home when they sent me there. I live like a king. Right. <laughs> no, that's good advice, though, because a lot of people, they go there. I mean, because, you know, I've, I've been there, you know, not the same places as you, but I was down. I know I know one of the things that cracks people the most in there is... is uh. So they go in there and they get under pressure and they just snap. Right. Because they're not strong on the inside, you know. Their mind's not strong. I can understand that. heart's not strong. Yeah. You know, so yeah, no, that's good advice for people hey, that are going in, you know. For me, it wasn't nothing but a gangster party. Gangster party. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, um, okay, so we, so I think we covered in a nutshell who Robert Garcia is. Um, I'm sure they're going to learn a lot more about you when we do these, these podcasts in the future. But for now... Mm-hmm. Um, let, I want to try to ask you some, some, uh, some off-topic questions. You know, just just different kind of, uh, uh, just to kind of get some stuff flowing. But uh, all right. So I wrote, uh, "Have you ever done drugs?" <laughs> well, <No. laughs> right. You're not the FBI, are you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think I can cover that. <clears throat> right. 
without giving away any names or what kind of drugs. <laughs> I went through my experimental <laughs> stages just like any other youngster does. Yeah. You grow up, your friends tell you, try this, try that. And you, you're, you're trying to, a lot of people will say you're trying to see what flavor you like. Mm-hmm. Mine was, my thing was just, I like to drink once in a while because I can still go places out in public and talk and function and, and mingle with other people and still be normal, but still being in control. That was my main thing. And so I just like to drink a cold beer once in a while and a little bit of whiskey if I, if I have a good looking woman there and yeah. I'm home and I'm not going anywhere. Um, and, 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 and a little wine once in a while and have a real good time. That's all. Well, so, so let me ask you this. It, on the drug thing, right? I know that we don't want to go too deep into that, but but we got a lot of other podcasts out there, right, where people talk about doing psychedelics and stuff like that. They've got these crazy stories, right? I went through that. Do you, do you have like a crazy story about doing some kind of psychedelic drug or, or, or something well, weird like that? When I, when I was young, I'd say about 16, they started getting introduced to me or I started hearing, hearing around about mescaline, acid, and all that, just like anybody else. So one time I tried some purple microdot. And my friends came out there, these girls came out there and go, hey, you want a ride? You want us to give you a ride home? And I go, no, man, can't you see I'm talking to this tree? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> That's pretty rude to interrupt me while I'm talking to this tree, man. <laughs> and so my yeah. friend... Asked me, did I want to ride home? Everything was in slow motion. So I told him, all right. He had an RD350 motorcycle. So we got on it, and he started popping wheelies on the freeway. We got pulled over by the popo. They made me walk. Made him drive off. He come back and picked me up about an hour later, and then took me home. Went to his house, and then listened to some music, which at the time... Anything sounds good when you're on acid. <laughs> we actually listened to some ACDC. So I grew uh, up to a little bit of both worlds. Yeah. Oldies, R&B, soul music, and a little bit of rock and roll. Yeah. It did, did, but you, you handled the trip cool. It wasn't weird. It didn't oh, make you yeah, freak had, out. No bad trip didn't come back. I mean, I, I mean you're normal no. now, you know? No, I had to get a hold of myself at first because it was my first time. And these girls sat at the table, <clears throat> and I took a look at them, and they had three legs and three eyes. <laughs> and they go, all I heard was, eh, what's your name? <laughs> and that's when I had to get a hold of myself. Hey, this, is just, yeah. this is what the acid is making you feel like, man. This ain't right. really happening. So I just <laughs> let myself be smooth, like I try to be all the time. And I just started talking to him, and everything fell into place. Everything unfolded, and it just went. It, it was a good night. Good night after that. Yeah, but I had to tell myself at first. Had to reason with yeah. myself, contemplate with myself. This ain't really happening. Just let everything oh. unfold. Just go with it. So I just went with it, and I ended up having a good time. My dad told me about a time that you guys went out to Stockton. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know if it was with your dad or, or the rest of the cousins, but in you the guys beginning. smoked some KJ. <laughs> yeah, while, while we were there, <laughs> yeah. you know, they, their thing was, I got some, I got some, uh, not to mention no names, I yeah. got some cousins <laughs> from Stockton. That When we would get there, they liked seeing my dad. I mean, because, you know, they're older. I used to think they were my uncles, but they're actually my cousins. So they used to come over and with weed or um, what they call cavies, a little bit of marijuana with cocaine sprink- sprinkled in it as you roll it, or Sherman's or KJ, which is KJ's angel dust. Sherman is what they embalm dead people with, but they put a little bit of chemicals in there. But if you smoke it, about about five seconds. It's best to be with somebody... That's going to take care of you because in about five <laughs> seconds, you don't know really what's going on, man. Oh, man. So, yeah, it's a couple quick, of times a day, quick. what, what uh, Rich was talking about, we were coming back and we had a little piece of the KJ left. And his dad said, man, want to smoke some of it? We'll smoke the rest of this. And I go, well, Uncle Arthur, 
let me tell you this, man. If, if you smoke that, are you still going to be able to drive? And he told me, hey, shit, kid, I've been doing this since the 60s. Just don't freak out on me. So I go, all right, man, fire it up then. He was driving, so <laughs> he fired it up. And the next thing, about five seconds later, he goes, oh, no. And we started pulling over <laughs> to the side of the freeway. And I go, what's wrong? Uncle R, I thought you had been doing this since the 60s. What happened? He goes, I can't drive. <laughs> so we pulled over and we stayed there for about two hours. And they go, hey, Uncle Art, well, we can't stay here all night. You want me to drive? And he goes, oh, no, you ain't driving my car. So we stayed there for about another hour. Yeah. And then we both came down. We started coming down off our high. And then we ended up driving back to Napa. No cops, no nothing, no. No cops, no nothing, which was kind of surprising. <laughs> because here in Napa, you're yeah. always seeing cops everywhere you go, everywhere you park. In your own yard, if you if you drink and you step off the sidewalk, they wanna they wanna say something. Yeah. Well, we didn't see no cops. You know, it's funny because he told me the story the same way, like as if you guys had the exactly the same. We were trip. Over, we were over there by the levee. <laughs> he said everything shrunk. Yeah, <laughs> we were over there by the levee. It was all water and 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 just out in the fields, and that's why I think there was no cops because we were out in the boonies oh, and the sticks. Right. <laughs> Well, I, look, I, w- I want to get to some more questions. This is, we, we're trying to give everybody a, 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 all the all the angles of, of Robert Garcia. Right on. I can dig that. So, how about uh, uh, mm-hmm. what's your philosophy on the meaning of life? Well, I'm trying to sum it up before on the meaning of life, and the reason for that was because one thing I did figure out is life short. I almost died in a car accident and a lot of things that I ha- have never done. So the way I summed it up is you want to work, own as much as you can because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Nobody knows what tomorrow's going to bring. So you want to do the best you can. Find a woman and you'll find love. And just live life out the best you can, have have as good a time as you can. You don't think there's a ultimate purpose, like we're supposed to uh, mine gold for aliens or something like that? Like we were just built, you know, by... I mean, no. you don't have some kind of weird philosophy on it? Like no. It's just kind of like, hey, just take it easy. Only if know. you got a cousin on Jupiter, <clears throat> then you want to try to mine gold for aliens. <laughs> <Yeah>. But if, <laughs> if you don't right. have a cousin on Jupiter, then you just want to try to have... The best time that you can, try to own a house, try to work yeah. and own a house and just have a good time. There's going to be good times and there's going to be bad times. Troubles will come and they will go. Right. So you just want to try to have as good a time as you can until you run into something like that. And you've had a lot of troubles, so you should know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we've all had them. A lot of them. A lot of them. Well, that's so, no secret, Richard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, without going into details. But, yeah. We, uh, so, I mean, I'm just letting the whoever's listening know that you've really been through a lot of really crazy stuff. You've had a lot of experiences out in the real world interacting with, 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 with people and bad stuff, you know. So, um, yeah. There, there was a time, Richard, when, <clears throat> and speaking of acid, I remember coming home one time, and Tina and Francis were there, <laughs> and uh, I was walking home, and I was on acid from... Uh, Those are our cousins, yeah. Yeah. From uh, this video place that they used to have on Jefferson Street. They closed it down because there used to be a lot of fights there. Um, anyways, I remember walking out of the store with my friend, He's passed away now, that guy, that dude told you oh, passed yeah, yeah. away. Uh-huh. Anyways, I went outside, I turned around like one time, and I forgot where I was or what I was doing. So I I seen a big old piece of paper on the ground, enough to cover my back. So I put it over my back and started walking down the sidewalk on Jefferson yeah. Street here in Napa. And when I, uh, I don't remember, but my sister tells me that when I got in the house, I told my Aunt Lucy, hey man, I got some badass shit on my back, and sat down on the couch and started kept sliding down the side of it, <laughs> and they were, they were laughing. And my uncle Lucy was telling them, "Hey, don't be laughing. What are you guys laughing at?" And the rest of the night, I just woke up on the couch, and yeah. and remember, kind of remembered 
a little bit about what happened. But that was yeah. a little bit of acid right there. When yeah. I first tried it out when I was younger. That's just a little bit. Well, yeah. Have you well, wear paper I, on your back? Well, that was just a, a big piece of paper that I right. put put on my back. And Do you know why walking. you put it on your back? Did it feel good or something? Well, because I was cold. Oh. <laughs> I thought, I, in my mind, it was yeah. going to keep me warm. But it was just right. a piece of paper. I mean, I laugh about it now, but right. at the time when it was happening, it was real. I really thought that piece of paper was going to keep me warm. Oh, man. Yeah. But, and then I laugh when my sister tells me, you came in here and you said that there was a, you had some badass shit on your back, and you started sliding down the couch, falling asleep, and they were, Francis, your girl cousin was laughing at you. And I found that out the next day, and I thought, oh, man, they must have known that I was on something. And they go, right. oh, yeah. Yeah, you're just no playing that off. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. well, Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's another question for you. How much can you bench? I mean, you're a big dude just because well, they can't see you right now. You're, you're a big guy, you know, so. Well, when I, I think about this question before I answer, when I tell you how much I can bench, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm huge or I'm a bodybuilder or anything like that. I'm, I'm switching from powerlifting to bodybuilding. And I seen on TV that most bodybuilders used to be powerlifters, so it goes with what I'm doing. I've been benching 400 pounds. 405 pounds since I was 17 in Napa Hunt. In Napa Hunt. And after my accident, I went down to 300 pounds. That's 345s on each side. 400 is 445s on each side of the 45 pound bar. Now I'm moving. I'm going back up to 400 pounds again. I'm, I'm getting my own my original strength back finally. You know, nice. it's been about seven years. Seven years around there uh-huh. that I'm getting back to my normal health. But, but I worked you never out. stopped working out. No. Really. It's, right. it's what carried me through, like, my therapy for myself. Because I'm on, nobody gave me therapy. I gave myself therapy. The gym was open here, uh, In Shape Gym. And I was waiting for it to open so I could go sign up. And some girl told me, hey, it's, it's already open, Robert. So I went over there. I limped over there because I was still walking on a cane because my leg was shattered and it's got my cast off. And I went over there and signed up, and I've been a member ever since then. The staff there is really nice. You can take showers there. and Sometimes I would just go there and charge my phone, take a shower. And I tell you guys, don't mind if I do this. They go, we don't care. You're a member. You can do anything you want. So I would just go there every once in a while and bench 300 pounds, work my way back to 400. And I see a lot of people that I used to work with, work out with in my younger days. And one guy told me, he's like, his name was Merritt. He goes, I'm sitting I'm 70-something years old, right, or 90-something years old right now, 96 years old now, right now, Robert. I remember you in Gold's Gym across the street from Napa High. So I'm seeing people in there, young and old, that I used to work out with. So working out is like a different kind of friends, you know. Yeah. You see them as time goes on. You see them at the store, you know. <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, a lot of people aren't going to know this, but you had gotten a car accident, you know, a few years ago. Right. It almost took you out. And I remember when we went to the hospital, a lot of us were just like devastated because you're like the hardest dude we ever met. So it's like I got a picture. We're, yeah, we're like, man, he almost almost died when you were in the hospital. I remember the doctor saying uh, he's not gonna make it. Right? They go, man, there's no way he's not gonna make it. Right. And uh, so that crushed everybody. But then you made it. Right. So then they said, well, he's not gonna be right. His brain's not gonna heal up. You know, and all this stuff. Right. And uh. Then it did. And, and then they told me, they said, everybody, you're not going to be able to walk. You can't remember. They had you doing therapy to walk and stuff like that mm-hmm. for a minute. And they were like, he's never going to be able to walk. He'll be messy. Then you did. And then I remember the last thing the doctor said when they came in and talked to us. We had told him, man, you said he wasn't going to be able to do all this stuff. Like, you know, what are you talking about? Like, he's, he's coming back, you know? And they said, they said, you know, the only thing we could come up with, they said, is he's so strong and he works out so much. His body just already knows to repair itself, basically is what he was saying. So we were like, damn, okay, you know, and, and, it, and it makes so much sense now because now there's a lot more stuff coming out about in science that says like, well, if you exercise, you know, real tough and, and stuff like that, your, your body repairs itself a lot better. You know, now they say this, it's almost like, were they watching you? <laughs> How'd they know that? Like, 
Well, you know, Richard, you didn't say that before this happened to you, and you pulled all the way back through. Allow you know? me to elaborate on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the nurse said the same thing. I, I like the fact that she said I was a well-muscled man. Uh, <laughs> re recuperating was really fast, but that was only because I was healthy. And the doctor said, you know, we told your mother and your sisters you weren't going to make it and all your family. The only reason why you made it is because you were healthy before you started. I, I've been working out since I was 12 years old. I used to use a picnic bench as a bench press till I started going to the gyms. <laughs> But he said, the only reason why you made it was because you were healthy. If you weren't healthy, you, you would not have made it. Uh, and my little sister tells me that they were getting ready to pull the plug on the life support machine. And she said, the doctor was telling her, if he don't, he don't work out, wake up pretty soon, we're going to have to pull the plug. And then I woke up right after that. I must have heard what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. They say the last thing to go is your hearing. So I woke up, and, and they, they said, the only reason why I recovered was because that I was healthy. So they say you can never prepare for an, ac an accident. And that's true in a way because right. you never know when an accident is going to happen. But by staying healthy, your body will, will ask, actually repair itself a lot faster, which right. is what my body did. And, and there's, a did, book, yeah. there's a book that says people healing from brain injuries, which, which I was, did some amazing things. And... I'm hoping that some of those things happen to me, and I think they are in little ways. One guy, the book I read, one guy discovered a mathematical chart. And they thought it's nothing. He just bumped his head too hard. But then after they did some research, they said it was amazing that that had never been discovered before. Another guy played classical music on right. the piano that was right. healing from a brain injury. It wasn't as brilliant as the first guy, but they, their brain neurons, those are brain cells, healed in different ways, which allowed them to do some unusual things. Right. I mean, and so you're waiting for your secret power to get unlocked here pretty soon. Well, I'm, I'm noticing <clears throat> little things that aren't as big as those other people that I read about, but I am noticing a lot of things that I'm able to do that I wasn't able to do before. Like math? Yeah, <laughs> I'm messing like, with you. <laughs> no. One thing is... Uh. To remember uh, girls' names the next day after I had been with them all night, I right. couldn't remember their names. <laughs> they would go, what's my name? What's my name? And i go, well, uh, you know how I would get them. Yeah. I would ask them, well, how do you spell your name? And they would tell me, and then I would know their name. Yeah, oh, how do you spell your name? <laughs> That's pretty slick, yeah. Well, I had to I be. You know, that that way they would yeah. know I had been with them all night and didn't want them to right. think that I had forgotten their name. Right, is that Judy with an I or with a Y? You just, but you don't say that. You're just kind of like, no, they well, had, how do you spell your name? There's a lot of ways to spell that. What, what was it? Judy had two eyes. She didn't <laughs> yeah. only have an eye. She had two eyes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I just you know, uh, uh, when they would tell me how to spell their name, like Mary, and then I would say, she said, well, M A R Y. Go, oh, okay, your name is Mary. But that's how I would get yeah. them, so they didn't think I would forgot their right. name. You know, you know, you know. Homeboys, friends, nobody wants a girl to think you forgot their name, especially after you've been with her all night. So that's yeah. how that was my way of <clears throat> tricking them, asking them how to spell their name. Right, but now you don't have to do that because you're developing like a superpower well, to remember no, girls' names. Now I can tell them, hey, it's my brain injury. I can blame it on my accident. Oh, right. That's why I don't remember your name because, <clears throat> you know, my accident, my short term uh, memory, because yeah. I got short term memory. I can remember the doctor's. Yeah. It's documented in the hospital that I can remember 30 or 40 years ago, but I can't remember five or 10 minutes ago. So I, I, if I forget their name, I can say, hey, you know, it's my accident. Right. Go, oh, okay, we heard about that. And I go, okay, so don't think yeah. that I don't, that I didn't love you when last night was unfolding, because I do. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And you remember that? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like riding a bike, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you got, you, you you got to remember because whether I remember them their name or not, I remembered exactly what to do when the time came. And yeah. that's what counted. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's, what, that's pretty much why they came over, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> not for you to remember their name. Exactly. Just to see if all the stuff they heard about you was true, like... Does he really stand on his hands? Is this, you know... Does he really ask you to salute him after you're done? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. 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 
So, on the working out topic, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to give somebody who's just trying to work out and don't got a lot of experience working out, one really good tip, you know, how to kick it off, how to, you know, what, what, what would that one good tip be for them, you know, well, some good advice from someone who's been working out their whole life? Here's one, Richard. I learned this in San Quentin. So, health is your first wealth. You can use it, look, use these three things, these three philosophies that I used when I was working out, working out when I first started. Uh -huh. Working out, when you start getting healthy, it's going to help you defend yourself. It's like your best friend. And after people see you getting big, they're going to leave you alone. It helps you with work. If it's physical labor, it's going to make it easier on you. And the ladies like it. So those are the three things that you can get out of working out. Right. Defending yourself, it's going to help you defend yourself, and the ladies like it. It's true. So I call yeah. it the playboy or the player workout. And that, that's my own words. That doesn't, that's not in any book you read. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we were talking earlier on the phone, and you told me, uh, you told me <clears throat> consistency. You know, you remember, well, yeah. which I thought was a pretty good one. Okay. You know, if you were going to lock it down in like a word, you know, right. consistency is a, a, a pretty good piece of advice. Consistency? Because <clears throat> you've never stopped, right? Willpower. Always, yeah. Can't stop, won't stop. Right. Mind, body, soul. No hurt, no big shirt. Yeah. <laughs> no pain, no gain. Right. <laughs> and there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. So here, we're going to take this one to outer space now. You ready for this? Bring it. I think people are going to want to know, <clears throat> you know, because you sound like a real uh, hard-edged kind of kind of fella. You know, someone has been through a lot of rugged stuff. We're going to take this to softy land now. Have you ever been in love? Cause I, I, and it's a good question for me to ask because I've, I've, never, I've never known you to be in love. <laughs> Not like really, like, you know, i never seen it. But it could have been before my time. Well, maybe I have and don't know it. Because <laughs> you don't think you have? You no, don't remember it? No, that's not it. It's just because I, I told this girl that had just came recently into my life after my accident mm -hmm. that I was in love. And she asked me, how do you know that you're in love? I, I don't know if her question was, she wanted to be sure that I was in love with her, that she liked me, or that she was contemplating the idea of a, somebody like me actually being in love, with, in love with her. But I thought about it. It made right. me think, you know, I've had a lot of uh, girlfriends in my younger days before my, before my accident. And it was just a weekend thing. I took them back home, and when they started getting bossy, I said, hey, if you you don't stop getting bossy, I'm not going to pick you back up. Yeah. So, it made me think to myself, in other words, and I thought, well, how do I know I'm in love with this girl? But, you know, I just, I really, I don't, I really don't think anybody knows. I just think that I felt it in my heart that this must be what love feels like because it feels right. We're having a good time. And, um, and you don't want her to leave? Yeah, and you just know it in your heart right. when it's love. It's the best that I can think. So what do you think about people who, who think they're in love and it and, and turns out that later on they're not with the girl and they go, oh, that was like the worst relationship I ever was in. What was that all about? I was tripping. You know, like, you think sometimes people are just delusional? No, I think it, it, it has to do with that saying that has been said for years beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that's of the person that thinks that that girl is beautiful nobody else can see it but that person right and that's how that person knows or thinks that they're in love because nobody can see it through their eyes okay and that's been the same yeah. for years all right, okay. So then it's just later on, people just think, like, oh, I made a mistake, but 
during the time, you really do kind of love that girl, I guess. Yeah, you just have, right. you just have to ride the wave. Okay. And <clears throat> if it takes you into good things, because there's different kinds of love. There's You fall in love with a girl that is going to make nothing but good things happen. She's going to fit into your life. And everything around you is going to go good. Or there's that girl that you feel you're in love with and everything around you starts turning sour and starts going bad. There's that kind of love you thought you were in love. So it all depends on what kind of love that you fell in love with. Richard? Okay. Ricardo? Ricardo? <laughs> Rabbit? All right. Um, how about <clears throat> How about this one? If you could go back, because now we're looking at things like, okay, you're the one and only Robert Garcia, right? You're you. You're this this guy. We just let everybody understand how you are, who you are, right? If you could go back in time and change one thing, would you do it? And if you could, what would it be? I mean, or you know, would you be afraid it would stop you from being the one and only Robert Garcia? The well, you Richard, are now? in answer to that question, I've asked a couple people that they were on their deathbed. One of them was my dad, Victor Garcia. And he told me, no, Robert, I wouldn't change a fucking thing. And those were her, his words exactly. Right. And yeah. so that, that leads me to the question, would I, as Robert Garcia, mm -hmm. change anything <clears throat> right. of the life that I have lived? And the only thing that I can think of, I worked all my life. I was in the union right when I was 18, worked for some big companies for the old Kaiser Steel and Apple Pipe making $1,000 every four weeks. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough for one person growing up. Uh -huh. So I think that I can think of just on the dime right now, that means just having been asked the question and having to answer it in a second's time. <laughs> I would think that I had a lot of good times. But one thing I would have liked to have been taught at an early age how to hang on to a lady that you really like. Right. And that's the only thing that I was a little confused about. Like, But other than that, I had a real good time. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good experiences, a lot of good time. And You don't think you'd really change anything other than maybe trying to hold on to a chick? Not really, because like I said, Richard, yeah. I worked all my life. So I always had cars, money, studios, apartments. Everything I wanted or needed. I ran around here in Napa doing whatever the fuck I wanted because I had the money to do it. And in Napa, you got to have the money to do what you want to. So I ended up in jail, prison. So what, man? It's part of my experiences. It made me be who I'm going to be today, tomorrow. And other than that, I wouldn't change anything, Richard. You know, Richard, the way I see it is... <coughs> I wouldn't have belonged to a different family if I had a second chance to do it all over again to Wally Cleaver family or or Leave it right. to Beaver or <laughs> I was proud to say that my last name is Garcia and I can walk my tongue so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> but and I was proud to have the uncles and aunts that I had to have grown up with them. I mean, your dad, my dad, they lived on Spencer Street. They had a pool table in the garage. They taught me how to play pool. I mean, I had a real cool ch childhood. Cousin George was there for a while. And it was just an experience, Richard, that I'll never forget. And I don't think money can buy the experience that I've been through right. in my childhood or in my growing up days when I was 18 and a little bit after I was 18. You don't even see the, the things that I've been through on movies or read them in a book. But in my mind, they're embedded in my mind because it was part of my upbringing, part of my relatives that, you know, I respect and admire till this day. And like when my dad passed away, I went up to a clinic. This is right over, right over the hill here. And my dad had been passed away and some guy started talking bad about my dad. And I go, well, you know what? My dad's been gone for, he's been passed away for about nine years now. He's not here to defend himself, but I'm here. 
And I, I dropped him with one punch, knocked him to his knees. And there was four guys sitting on the couch, and I said, hey, you're not going to get up and back this dude up? They go, no. And I go, okay. They go, the cops probably coming. And I go, oh, that's what I thought. And I went, or, went, out, went outside and made out with some lady right underneath the manzanita tree. And then I left. Sometimes people need to get punched in the face. Well, yeah, you, you know, I, a lot of people I, 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 I try to tell them, you know. Well, you live your life like a movie, and, and a lot of people don't know that. Like, a lot of stuff you do in your life, people, when they hear the stories, go, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, you know. But, you know, without going into all the details, I know your life is like a movie, for real. You know, you know it's, Richard, in a way, in a sense, you're right, because I, I, went, I went to, when I told you I went to the pan for 23 years, nothing weird, just for self-defense. The judge would say, well, there was 10 of them, but they went to the hospital. You didn't. You're guilty. I go, is that what they taught you on law school there, buddy? They got beat up. That's not my fault. So live and learn, though. You know, I, I learned yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I learned how to defend myself early on when I was about 12 years old. So when I was about 12, I knew who I was. A lot of people don't know who they are. They got to try to drink a little beer and try to prove it. But I already knew who I was when I was 12 years old. And so my life was gratifying, self-fulfilling. I was happy with my family. I, I am happy with the, the relatives that I had. I mean, all my aunts could cook. My dad told me a story before he passed away. He let me read his birth certificate. His mother was from Zacatecas, Mexico. His father was from Chihuahua, Mexico. And it said that, he, he told me, he said they they picked, when they, his sisters came from Mexico with, he was born in Angel's Camp, though, my mom in St. Lena. And he said they picked fruits and vegetables for their money. And they lived in the car until they got out here in uh, Napa and they bought a house on Spencer Street, right over there by Napa High. And then the story just goes on after that. But uh, I wouldn't change a thing, not even if I could. Right. The way I was raised or the way I lived or my relatives. That That's probably episode one, huh? Episode yeah. Episode one, all right. That's heavy, I can dig that. <clears throat> okay. Then uh, that's the introduction to uh, Robert Garcia, the one and only Robert Garcia show. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be back with a second episode and we're going to have some some off topics and we're going to go on one one topic from there each episode we'll, we'll get into something how's that that's deep I can all right <laughs> okay well till hey, next time one, one other thing i had the privilege to meet the hippie generation is one of the coolest generations i could have met when i was coming out of fuller park here in Napa. they asked me hey can you want to learn how to play frisbee and they taught me all kinds of tricks that was one of the coolest generations, and I, I'm glad I had the pleasure of meeting that generation of people. Hippies? Yeah. Yeah, they don't really have those. They kind of. No, but they were a part of my upbringing. Yeah, yeah. So right on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>